Hello everyone, my name is Dmitry and you on my brand new channel Nightingale Works. This is gonna be a channel of another maker, myself. In this space I'm going to create some stuff with my hands, maybe with some tools. I'm, I'm just gonna say right now that I don't have many, I don't have a lot of space, I'm just ordinary human, I don't have any special magical skills like being artist, scientist or working with some extreme machinery. I have some special scene in my workshop, but I'm gonna introduce it to you later. So without wasting more of your time, let's jump into the project. Today's deal is a 3D portrait of your beloved pet. This one is a portrait of my cat Petrushka. You can translate her name from Ukrainian as parsley. That's you can read here. This one is made of wood from 3 mm plywood. It goes layer by layer, uh, one on the top of each other, and it creates this 3D picture. So when you look like gently from the side, you can see it's not a flat surface, it has some third dimension in it. So without more empty talking, let's jump in it. Doesn't matter what project you have in your mind, from my experience, the best way to start is from a sketch or detailed plan, even better. So in my case, as I said, I'm going to use some machinery. The only way to communicate with that is a computer. So I have to make the whole project on a computer first. First of all, I wanna find a great picture of my kitty cat. So as soon as we have it, I put it to the Photoshop. We using any tool you like to separate it from a the background. Then you fix a little bit imperfections, cut the picture to the side and make it black and white. I also would like to mention real quick that this video is not DIY because this process requires some design skills which is really not possible to fit and explain in one video. At this point I made the image so contrast that it's not even pretty anymore but I needed to make it work as a shape in the future. So our goal to create two layers, first of them is gonna be the base layer, which is basically just the shape of the cat's head or face, and second layer, the one that is gonna be cut out of the wood. Next, we're going to group all little kind of spots, small details, all these small pieces, you're just gonna group it as much as you can together. So when you're gonna cut it, it's not gonna fall apart, but it's gonna stay together as one piece. The more pieces you can stick together to one figure, that better. Because when you're gonna cut it, you wanna have some material there. At this point, I noticed there is a big empty spot between two pieces of wood. And I realized when it's gonna be cut, it's gonna be very weak, it's gonna hang around and I'm not sure if it's gonna stay together. So I decided to check with the original picture, uh, see the color markings on a pet's face and after that I drew that one more line just to connect two big pieces together. Then we check out and trying to see if there is no more little spots left, just delayed all of the small details and that's it. I'm going to do some kind of framing for the pet portrait and for this frame I decided to use a paw shape. I'm just going to use some paw print vector graphics from a stock. I have a subscription because I'm using it for my work. If you ever gonna come back to this channel and meet me again, you're gonna notice that my favorite art style is the one which have a lot of small details all around the artwork. For this reason, I decided to make the frame not just a pow shape, but I decided to fill it with all of the small details which represents the cat life. I'm going to go two different ways right now. One of them, I'm going to prepare a file for my laser cutter, which is going to be used for making wooden portrait. And another way, 
I'm going to print all of those shapes on a color paper. And in the future, I'm going to cut it out just with my scissors, project knife. We're gonna glue it together and make same kind of portrait, but with a paper. And this little project going to represent the way everybody can do same art project, cause not everybody have CO2 laser cutter at home. So here we are, we just at the craft table, which is my dining table in this case, and I'm going to start cut it all with just all good scissors. But same time, you see on the screen, I'm going to use my CO2 cutter to cut same shapes out of plywood. I have a really small workshop, so I'm using this tiny teeny CO2 laser cutter for 40 watts, uh, they usually called 4K lasers, that works for my case. Unfortunately, its working field is really small, so I'm really limited to the size of machine, so the cat portrait I'm doing is gonna be the biggest size I can make on this machine. same time as laser cutter is much much better and much faster much easier it's still not perfect sometimes cut doesn't go all the way through and you have to cut it with a knife it also requires at least a small workshop it requires uh, air ventilation but still that's a great tool and i'm using it a lot and i really like my laser cutter And I must say, any shape you cut out of wood, as soon as you take it to your hand and it's a really small but same time really detailed figure, it feels so cute, it looks really nice and so unusual, so as soon as you take it to your hands you understand that that totally worth it. Next step, I was going to assemble the work, just to take a sneak peek how it's gonna look when I'm going to paint it, just to make sure all of the details stick together, they match, and I can go ahead and proceed to painting. Even at this stage, when you just assemble, work together, you can see that it already looks nice. And you totally know that after you're going to paint it, it's gonna look just like you want it. Uh, for painting, I usually use wood stains. For the reason they are cheap, they are easy to work with. And the main thing, after you paint your wood, sometimes you still can see the wood grain. For this kind of project, that's really what I wanted because you still can see the wood grain, but it's really fine work. You feel unusual when you see work like that, because it's hard to imagine that someone can cut it with your hand, but at the same time it has that look like it's handcrafted. Talking about paper version, I must say that was a challenge. Cutting the small details with laser, that's one thing, you just staying and staring at machine working, but when you're holding your scissors in your head and you're trying to hit all of those small spots, all of that fur ornament, oh man, that's really hard. I spent a lot of time doing that, but I realized that I needed to spend much more time to get much better quality, because I can't really say I was happy with quality of my hand cutting. When stain is dry, it's finally time to assemble the portrait and after even putting like three layers together which covers the base you can see that project went well and you can go ahead and just add more details on it and it's only gonna make it better 
Another thing with the laser cutter, when you leave some wood unfinished, like the top layer, I decided to keep it like natural birch plywood color. I realized that there is a, some uh, laser burns on the top of the work. So sometimes you just have to take the sanding paper and go ahead and sand it a little bit. You just have to be careful not to break those small details. And when it's all dry and already it's finally time to assemble it together, that's the best moment you can have on this project. You just see your work coming together as one piece and you just add in some glue and stick it together. For those big three layers, I'm going to use clamps. You can find them all over in a big box store like Home Depot or Lowe's and they cost one dollar, but they extremely handful for this kind of job. They have a strong spring and they holding it really well. You just have to make sure your piece is not sliding for the sides. Just hold it until you press it from all of the sides. I also designed and cut it some hangers. Uh, they also made of birch plywood. I'm just gonna cut it, glue it together and put it on a works back so later on I can hang it on a wall. Gluing the small details is the best part because that's really enjoying experience. You just put the small cute things on a work and they bring the work to life. I also included that little video of hand cutting just to show you how much work it took. It, it took me at least two or three hours to cut those paper shapes. And, oh man, I wasn't happy when I was done. I was tired, I just wasn't really happy with the cuts I did, because uh, hand cutting is probably not my thing, I don't know. But assembling it together showed that it still looks cute, I liked it. And if you wanna do that kind of work to your house, you definitely should try and make it from a paper with ordinary tools everybody have in their house. So here we are at the end of the project and we have two different cat portraits right now. So the one of them is made of paper made of just scissors, some glue and some uh, sticky tape pieces. I don't know, I'm not sure what that's called, but that's the thing you can find in Dollar Tree. And another one is made of wood on a laser cutter with a special machinery. Not everybody have it at home, so obviously that's not the result you're gonna head for if you're not using the CO2 laser cutter with this paper one. I must say, I was kind of in a rush, maybe in the middle of the cutting process, I become desperate because I realized I'm not going to be able to cut all of the small details, all of the small holes that gently, that careful. Even by using that project knife, which is really sharp, it's like blade and it's really comfortable to hold, it's really comfortable to use, but I realized I'm just not able to cut that small details. So. If you ever going to do that project yourself using paper, printing it out, my recommendation to fill all of the small details with black paint. I mean, when it prints it out, you're not gonna cut those holes, you're just gonna keep it black. Honestly, you're not even gonna be able to see the difference between a cut and between the filled paint. I mean, it, it not worth it sitting and trying to cut all of those tiny details like uh, four lines or whatever, I would just fill it up. And of course, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be able to cut it much better than I did because I felt a lot of impatience because I already had this wooden thing done and I was really happy about it. And then I tried to make it just to show you that you're gonna be able to make it at home. And what I realized, you actually will be able to make it at home. And I want to encourage you that if you're gonna spend just a little bit more time, you're gonna be a little bit more patient, 
you're gonna do much better. So it's all I wanted to say about this project. I really happy how the Petrushka's portrait came out with done with the wood on my laser cutter. And as you see, you also can do it on your own, just using scissors and glue and some paper. Just do it at home. I would like to invite you to visit Etsy shop, which calls Nightingale Works. You're gonna see same logo on the shop banner. There I have quite a little bit of product. We are selling wooden signs with the custom engraving and some keepsake wooden boxes, which you also can engrave with any kind of design. You can put the picture of your pet on that box, the pictures of your hobby, you can write any text on it. So I would like to invite you go and see what we have there. That's all for now. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. Don't hesitate to subscribe the channel. My name is Dmitry. You watch Nightingale Works. See you next time. Bye.